Happy Saturday, everybody. Meteorologist Hunter Forst here. Welcome to Hurricane Hub Live, where we track everything that's going on in the tropics. And you would think as we get closer and closer to the peak of hurricane season, which is just a couple days away, the tropics, the Atlantic would be a little bit more active. Now we have been tracking Invest 91L over the last couple of days. And we have some better news. You know, those chances have gone down and down over the last couple of advisories, and this is not a typo. The chances of development as of the 8 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center, the chances now are 0% that we're going to see a tropical depression forming. So some fantastic news there. So what we thought was going to form, what we thought Gabrielle was going to do is likely not going to happen as we go throughout the next couple of days that has been fighting off some very, very dry air. That is what has been helping the system, you know, stay uh, or not allow it to really explode into something, especially in this region, in the main development region where you normally have not a lot of wind shear. You don't have that Saharan dust. You have really warm waters, and that's why you see a lot of activity in this area during this time of year. But as we take a look at the tropical satellite of what kind of was Invest 91L, uh, not a whole lot going on. A few you know, areas of showers and thunderstorms, but that dry air has really shredded this apart. And as we take a look at the last you know, 48 hours or so, we were definitely seeing some good convection um, around, you know, one of the centers of the storm. There were kind of two, an upper level and lower level at one point. We we're seeing some good convection, but that Saharan dust really got the best of this system and shredded it apart. And now not expecting to see much out of this. And it's not because the sea surface temperatures aren't warm enough. We're seeing plenty of warm waters in this region. Temperatures in the lower 80s, which is perfectly sustainable for tropical activity. So sea surface temperatures, that's out. As we take a look at the wind shear, Invest 91L was kind of sitting right in this region. So not a whole lot of wind shear in that area. Some off towards the north and some down to the south. So that wasn't really the main reason why this kind of shredded apart. As we go over the next couple of days, we'll see some more wind shear off the uh, African coast, some more often to the central Atlantic and the southern Atlantic. But in this region, still not a whole bunch of wind shear. But here's that Saharan dust. That is what really killed this system. When you have a lot of dust and dry air in the atmosphere, it helps storms to either weaken if they've already become something or it doesn't help them develop at all. It constricts them from developing. It gets, you know, in between all those storms and cells and doesn't allow it to explode, especially during this time of year. So this is what saved us from Gabrielle kind of forming over the next couple of days. But as we head into the upcoming work week, that Saharan dust does kind of lessen. So still something to keep track of as we head into next week, but not a whole bunch of development expected over the next couple of days. So that is some good news there. But as we take a look at the European model, here's you know where that activity is, where that invest is or was, and you'll notice not a whole bunch going on as we head into the day tomorrow. Squat. So that is the good news. And even as we head into the upcoming work week, Maybe a few areas of spin trying to come off the African coast, a few waves as we get into next weekend, but really not something to cry home about. So that is some good news, especially as we head into the peak of the season, which is about five days away. But of course, still have to continue watching as we take a look at tropical development heading towards uh, the 10th and the 16th. A few ch a chance we could see some low development as we head into uh, the middle of September, but again, those chances are low, maybe a little bit of development over towards the uh, Caribbean, but overall not expecting a whole lot. But once we get more towards the end of the month, there is signs that we could see the tropics starting to pick up once again as we get towards the end of September, even into October, a moderate chance of some development there over towards the main development region, but also a low chance of development in areas around the Gulf. So of course we still have to continue watching. We still have weeks and weeks left of the hurricane season. It goes until November 30th and we're just about to reach the peak. So still plenty of time 
for storms to form as we head into the next month or so. As we take a look, though, at the tropical activity over the next couple of days, right now it is September 5th or September 6th, excuse me, four days away from the peak of hurricane season. Uh, and then after that, that's when we kind of start to see the activity starting to go down. But still, by the end of uh, September, even into October, you could still see um, some major storms. So you can't let your guard down, guard down yet, even though it's been a relatively quiet season. Still chances we could see things developing and forming as we head into the next couple of weeks. But right now, really nothing to worry about. So that is some fantastic news there. So far, we've seen Andrea, Barry, Chantel, Dexter, Aaron, and Fernand. And we've only had one hurricane, which was Aaron, which turned out to be a Category 5 storm. This is the one that went between the East Coast and Bermuda. But that's been it so far. The rest of the storms have been tropical storms. The next name on the list was going to be Gabrielle. But right now, it's not looking like we're going to see that name for anytime soon. So that is some great news. Then we have Umberto, Imelda, and Jerry on the list. All right, coming up on HHL, we have an update on Kiko, which was a major hurricane out in the Pacific, which was making its way towards um, Hawaii. There's been a bit of a shift in the track, so I'll go over that, but also a new area to watch in the eastern Pacific as well. But also, we can't go do HHL without some Hurricane Hub Live trivia. So we'll be talking about that after the break. Welcome back to Hurricane Hub Live. I'm meteorologist Hunter Forrest. Let's take a look at the Eastern Pacific. We have Hurricane Kiko, a major Category 3 storm, has started to weaken over the last couple of days, which is some good news. Winds are now down to 125 miles per hour, gusting to 150, moving to the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. And as of the latest advisory, the good news is the track has shifted a bit more north of the Hawaiian Islands, and it's still going to continue to weaken over the next couple of days, getting down to a cat one by Monday afternoon. And by the time it passes to the north of the Big Island, expected to become a tropical storm with winds at around 65 miles per hour. So impacts for the Hawaiian Islands would just likely be some gusty winds, 
But I think the main threat would be rip current risk and also some bigger waves, higher than what they normally see. Uh, so that is some good news there, and that will continue to trek off towards the west, eventually weakening back into a tropical depression as the environment is not very favorable for systems to uh, the north and west of the island. So again, some good news there for the islands, but still some minor impacts. If you have plans on heading, heading there for a vacation or if you have any family there, but it is going to stay or the center will stay just off to the north. As we take a look at another area, though, that we are tracking, this is off the coast or well off the coast of Mexico and Baja. Right now, about a 20 percent chance of development over the next week. But if it does develop, it's going to continue to progress off towards the west. So again, not much to worry about with this system. So some good news there. Let's take a look at the names we've seen so far in the Eastern Pacific. They've had a rather active season, especially earlier uh, in the season. They were having name after name storm after name storm. They've had Elvin, Barbara, Eric was a category four storm. They had Flossie, which was a cat three, Gil, Henriette, they had Juliet and we just had Lorena, which was a category one, which some of that remnant moisture moved up into uh, portions of the southwest around New Mexico and Arizona. Next name on the list would be Mario. All right, Hurricane Hub Live trivia. Here's the question. What was the first hurricane to have a male name? Way back when, when they first started naming hurricanes, they were all female names and then eventually I believe it was around the 70s they started to introduce male names into the naming system so tomorrow we'll have the answer it's either Bob it was either Brett Bill or Barry all the latest on that coming up tomorrow for Hurricane Hub Live and make sure to join us here every day live at 8 o'clock have a great rest of your evening